If you are watching this on your phone right now, congratulations, you are holding a rock that learned how to store electricity. Okay, maybe it is not technically a rock anymore. It is now a precisely engineered cocktail of metals, each with its own special role that once lived deep underground. These metals have been mined, refined, processed, and now sit quietly in your pocket, silently powering your day, from the first alarm you snooze in the morning to the last TikTok video you watch before bed. From the outside, a battery seems boring, just a sealed block inside your device maybe with a warning label you have never read. But inside, it is like a high-stakes dinner party hosted by the periodic table itself. The guest list includes lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, graphite, and sometimes a dash of aluminum or copper. And here is the thing, none of them are there by accident. Each one has a job. Together, they make sure your electric car moves your laptop boots up, and your phone survives that marathon social media scroll. So why this strange metal mix? Why can't we just use one magical material and call it a day? The answer is a mix of performance safety and a pinch of chemistry magic. Think of it like building a winning football team. You cannot just have all quarterbacks or all linebackers. You need balance. Without that, the game and your battery falls apart. Let's start with Lithium the MVP. Its name is even in the title, Lithium Ion Battery. It is ridiculously light, can store a lot of energy for its size, and moves ions faster than a kid runs when they hear the ice cream cream truck. That is why your phone charges in under an hour instead of needing all day. Lithium is the reason you can binge watch a whole season of your favorite show without sitting next to a wall outlet. But here is the catch. Lithium is not something you grow in your backyard. It has to be extracted from salt flats or hard rock mines in places like Australia, Chile, and Argentina. And this is not exactly a gentle process. In some areas, like the Atacama Desert, pulling lithium out uses so much water that it is like draining an Olympic swimming pool in the middle of a drought. This makes it a tricky balancing act. Lithium powers clean energy tech, but getting it can hurt the environment. If lithium is speed, cobalt is control. It helps your battery store more power without turning into a pocket-sized fire hazard. Without cobalt, your phone might work fine until it gets too hot and decides to audition for a fireworks show in your hand. Cobalt keeps things stable, making sure all that energy does not suddenly turn into heat you do not want. But cobalt has its own dark side. About two-thirds of the world's supply comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where mining conditions have sparked serious concerns about child labor and environmental harm. This is why researchers are racing to develop cobalt-free batteries that still perform well. Because a green future should not come with a hidden human cost. Nickel is the reason your electric car can drive hundreds of miles on a single charge. The more nickel in a battery, the more energy it can store, and the farther your EV can go before you start hunting for a charging station. EV makers love it. Drivers love it. The environment? Well, not so much. Nickel mining is energy-hungry polluting, and sometimes linked to deforestation in countries like Indonesia and the Philippines. In short, it is another reminder that clean energy is not always clean from start to finish. Manganese, aluminum, copper, and graphite, the unsung heroes. Manganese adds stability to the battery's chemical reactions, making the whole system more reliable. Aluminum helps certain parts stay light and strong. Copper is the wiring the highway electricity uses to move in and out of the battery. And graphite, that is where the lithium ions hang out when they are off-duty. And no, it is not the same graphite in your pencils. It has to be purified and processed to a high standard before it can work in a battery. Without these supporting roles, your battery would be less safe, less efficient, and probably a lot less useful. They may not be in the spotlight, but take one away and the whole show collapses. Why the mix matters? Each metal in your battery is there to solve a specific problem. Lithium provides capacity and speed. Cobalt adds stability. Nickel boosts range. Manganese further improves safety. Copper and aluminum keep electricity flowing smoothly. Graphite stores the ions when they are not in action. Remove any one of them, and your battery's performance drops sometimes in ways that could make it dangerous. Imagine trying to bake a cake without eggs. You could swap in something else, but the texture, taste, and structure would change. Batteries are the same. You cannot just take one ingredient out without affecting the final product. Here is the reality. Our demand for these metals is skyrocketing. Every new EV on the road, every new smartphone sold, and every renewable energy storage facility built adds to the shopping list. And unlike software, you cannot just download more lithium or cobalt. You have to find it, dig it up, and refine it. Processes that take time, money, and a whole lot of coordination. This is where things start to get complicated, and where the story of these metals moves beyond chemistry and into global politics, economics, and even human rights. The more we rely on batteries, the more these metals become not just materials, but strategic resources, things countries will compete over bargain with and maybe even fight for. So we have got this perfect little metal cocktail powering our gadgets, cars, and maybe someday our homes. But here is the twist. Those metals do not just magically appear in factories. They have to be mined, refined, and shipped, often crossing multiple borders before they end up in your battery. Who has the goods? No one wants 
wants to be caught in a battery shortage because in the future that is not just an inconvenience, it could slow down entire economies. To reduce dependency on a few key countries, nations are opening new mines. The US is pushing for lithium mines in Nevada. Canada is betting big on nickel. Europe is even exploring deep sea mining, basically scraping the ocean floor for minerals like it is a giant frying pan. But mining is not exactly something you can do without consequences. It is loud, messy, and often ugly. It uses massive amounts of energy and water. And in the case of deep sea mining, scientists warn, we could be damaging ecosystems we barely understand. One way to avoid tearing up more of the planet recycle the metals we already have. The average person probably has a drawer at home with at least one dead phone, a cracked tablet, and a tangle of forgotten chargers. All those old batteries are treasure chests of lithium cobalt and nickel just sitting there. Right now, though, most used batteries end up in landfills. That is a waste not just of materials, but of money. Companies like Redwood Materials in the U.S. are changing that. They are developing processes to pull metals out of old batteries and put them into new ones. Imagine your old phone's battery being reborn as part of a Tesla battery pack. It is cleaner, cheaper, and a whole lot less political drama. Meanwhile, scientists are working on ways to break our dependence on some of these metals entirely. Solid-state batteries promise more energy, faster charging, and longer life without as much cobalt. Sodium ion batteries use salt instead of lithium. And then there is hydrogen fuel cell tech, which if it ever scales up, could bypass the whole metal cocktail problem. The catch. These alternatives are still in the promising but expensive phase. We are talking years, maybe decades, before they could replace lithium ion batteries in a big way. But the race is on because whoever figures it out first is going to own the future of energy storage. Why it matters to you. You might be thinking, cool science lesson, but how does this affect me? Well, imagine this, a sudden spike in nickel prices could make electric cars thousands of dollars more expensive. A cobalt shortage could delay smartphone releases. A political dispute halfway around the world could mean your next laptop takes six months longer to ship. In a world that runs on batteries, metal supply chains are not just background noise, they are the heartbeat of modern life. Here is the uncomfortable truth, switching to electric cars and renewable energy does not mean we stop impacting the planet. We are just shifting the impact from oil rigs to mines. And while mining for battery metals might be cleaner in in terms of carbon emissions, it still has costs and water use, land damage, and human rights. This is not an argument against clean energy. It is a reminder that there is no such thing as free energy. Everything we use has to come from somewhere, and it is our job to make those choices as smart and sustainable as possible. So what is the path forward? A few key moves. Diversify where we get our metals so no single country can hold us hostage. Invest heavily in recycling so we can reuse what we have already mined. Support the development of new battery technologies that rely on more common materials. And manage the transition responsibly so we do not solve one environmental problem by creating another. If we can pull that off, the future of batteries could be cleaner, cheaper, and more secure. But make no mistake, without those weird metals, our vision of a clean energy future does not move. Literally, the car stays parked, the phone stays dead, and the lights stay off. Final thought, the metals behind the magic. Every time you tap your screen, you are part of a story that started years ago, maybe halfway around the world. Miners dug the metal, workers refined it, engineers designed a battery around it, and now it sits in your hand invisible but essential. Batteries may feel like magic, but they are really just metal chemistry and a lot of human effort arranged in the right way. As long as we keep demanding more power, faster charging, and cleaner tech, the hunt for those weird metals is not slowing down. If anything, it is just getting started.